Well, he's got a hard time with 125. He's got to sell things, some things off. Now. I'm always interested in good data. And for me, it's important to have good data. I'm not convinced that this particular poll is good data. Um, because if you're seeing such a drastic shift in very, very stable public opinion on this issue over a very long period of time, you want to you want to know about that. I've never heard of a poll that's only done on one day, on a sunny, sunny summer Sunday, um, when I certainly was out and about with thousands of Calgarians and charity walks and runs and church services uh, and family suppers at your in-laws and so on. So to do a poll on one day on a sunny summer Sunday is a bit weird. And if you look at it carefully, and I have not, I just had a minute to glance at it, you'll see that the population waiting in this poll is very odd. So for example, something like uh, under 10%, if memory serves, you can check the real number, but under 10% are in the 18 to 34 age range versus 33% of Calgarians, and about 78% of the respondents to the poll are over the age of 50. So this is, I'm sorry to say, not a representative poll, but I understand there are polling companies that are looking to do a proper scientific poll on this issue, and I'll look forward to seeing those results. What about the uh, your own uh, numbers and polls? And, you know, these things don't really matter so much, but I will note that I think that makes me the second most popular politician in Canada after Brad Paul. I'll take it. Can you comment on the Canadian Taxpayers Federation is calling for a referendum before any tax powers are just going on Premier Notley and the Municipal Affairs Minister to have a referendum before any tax powers? That's not new news. She said that before. Do you, do you feel that there should be a referendum before tax powers? You know, I think that we have to really look to the credibility of the people who are making these comments. So if you really want to hear the voice of the people, great. But take a look at the BC Transit referendum. The same group called for hearing the voice of the people and then immediately spent millions of dollars running the no sign. If you want to hear the voice of the people, hear the voice of the people and don't try to unduly influence them. What are thoughts on Minister Manley's uh, comments this morning? I don't know what they were. Oh, well, she said that uh, municipal campaign finance issues would be part of the legislative process. Oh, well, no, I hadn't heard that. Um, no, I'm pleased to hear that, actually. And as you all know, for some time, uh, I have been advocating for campaign finance reform long before I was the mayor. I ran both of my campaigns as though much more restrictive rules were in place voluntarily. I continue to have my five theses, uh, my five suggestions for municipal campaign reform. I'd love to see all of them in place. If these guys are brave enough to do that, that would be awesome. Spending limits, contribution limits, time limits, automatic disclosure and you can't keep your surplus for future elections. Uh, I think that that would be terrific. I'd love to see provincial regulation uh, on this matter. Uh, I'll answer a question you didn't ask. I know people love it when I do that, which is should we ban municipal donations from corporations and unions? That's actually a bit more problematic uh, in the absence of tax receipts for individual donations at the municipal level. Uh, if they wanted to treat contributions to municipal campaigns from a tax perspective exactly the same as they do contributions to provincial campaigns, absolutely bad for the union, but you've got to make that change you haven't, first. You haven't, uh, as far as I understand, we haven't formally asked either side. Let me ask, who do you think is more in line with your thinking on municipal campaign finance reform? The NDP government or your own council? Because neither have really discussed it. Well, no, our council has discussed it, as you know, uh, recently and rejected a motion to move forward, uh, I think, on a 9 to 6 vote, if memory okay, serves so correctly. They're not with you. And so, you know, it's tough, right? And I don't blame them for it. It's hard when you've been elected under a certain system and you've benefited from that system to be able to think hard about how to change the system. But I continue to think that the exceptions prove the rule uh, in this work. There's way too much money. Uh, there's way too many special interests involved because of our Wild West campaign finance structure and I've been saying for many, many years we need reform and continue to believe that. So in that regard, do you, do you, do you believe that the, this decision on municipal campaign finance is better placed in the hands of the provincial government or the city council? I, I don't mind fighting my own battles uh, at all, but on this one I fundamentally believe that you need province-wide regulations, that you really should have an even playing field across every province. I don't want a situation where you have a rogue council of some municipality that makes their own rules that you know really favor special interests, for example. Uh, I think democracy is something where you need a provincial field. 
if the province wants to give this to the city, then I'll fight that battle with council. So you are in favor you are in favor of banning corporate and union if there were tax, tax deductions. Tax. Sure. Yeah. It's not it's not one of my five proposals. Right. Um, but I but I'm not fundamentally opposed to it. So if that's the case that you'd rather the provincial government do it for like a plain field, why why was this part why is municipal campaign finance for the version of the charter negotiations? Because we've had successive provincial governments that refuse to touch it. Okay, so now that you have now that you have a government that's willing to act, let them. Act. If they're if they're willing to act properly, see the challenge with the old provincial government is that uh, then M MLA Jeff Johnson put forward a private members bill, which was really good intentioned, but not very well thought through, and it passed. And we're still dealing with some of the problems with that bill. Number one is it had terrible unintended consequences. It ended up putting way more money into politics by setting extraordinarily high campaign finance limits. Uh, before there were limits, there were only a small handful of donations of $1,000 in the whole province. When it set a $5,000 limit, that became the floor, not the ceiling. It became the expectation of the donations. So way, way more large donations, way more money flowed. And so this was the problem. They wouldn't want to, the previous governments really didn't want to admit they made an error. They didn't want to ask municipal politicians to stand up to a higher standard of disclosure and a higher standard of uh, campaign finance control than they themselves went for, and they weren't willing to do anything for themselves, which is why it became part of the discussion about devolving that to cities. If this provincial government is willing to do this, then I'd prefer a level playing field. You're making, making it sound. Because you do it by you do it by citizen council. Yeah, per capita, and then if it's a very, very small thing and one dollar per capita doesn't, whatever, doesn't make sense because you've only got 500 citizens, it's easy to set up a sliding scale. That, that's not a complicated thing. You're kind of making it sound like you want, like you don't, you don't think council should necessarily have a say in, in how their rules are set, but you want to have a say in how I just want new rules. I want new, strong rules. And, and as you know, it. and as you know, long before I was the mayor, I wanted new, strong rules. In fact, I made much of my political career out of needing new strong rules. So frankly, I'm at the point where I don't care who passes them, but they gotta be in place. One last question, folks. I'm sorry, the minister's committed to the Sorry. No, he's he's committed as they did in the Cities Matters survey to the original timeline. We'll see if they can hold on to it. Thank you.